my name is Sukhvinder Kelsey Ryan, and I am a, a physical therapist by training. Um, and I followed uh, followed up with that, doing some graduate studies, and I currently am a postdoctoral fellow at the Toronto Western Hospital in the Cranbrook Neuroscience Program. So essentially, uh, the side of the side of the coin that I work on is outcome measurement. So not so much an actual treatment intervention or not so much a way to make people better, but I specialize in how do we measure that. So how do we, how do we determine how effective treatments are? So um, outcome measurement is an extremely important field in spinal cord injury at the moment because many of our big trials over the last 10 years in spinal cord injury have actually failed. They have not been successful trials, and one of the biggest components that's contributed to the failure of those trials is the lack of sensitive outcome measures. So the initiative to develop better, um, well-established, well-designed, well-researched outcome measures has been, a, has been an ongoing issue in the field of spinal cord injury research for a number of years. And so we've reached a point where we have established one, one element, so that's being the grasp, that will help fill that identified void. So we now have an outcome measure that we can use to determine how much people change after an intervention. And so how this will help people is, is if interventions are effective, we can actually begin them as treatments. So starting in 2006, I started uh, working on the GRASP project, which is, um, it is, the GRASP itself is a clinical impairment measure specific to the upper limb for those who have tetraplegia. And this was a project that was actually uh, initiated by the Dana and Christopher Reeve Foundation. And um, once Dana and Christopher Reeve Foundation had funded us, uh, Rick Hansen Institute had also supported the same project. And essentially myself and five other scientists have developed a clinical outcome measure, which is showing promise to be certainly much more sensitive than the current gold standards in spinal cord injury. And the work is significant because it will allow us to measure change with a, with, a, with a much finer lens for those people that may be having some changes related to new drugs, new interventions, and it's allowing us to follow the tetraplegic population with a lot more accuracy. What we're doing is we're following individuals who are not receiving any, anything outside of the, the usual um, or the uh, conservative management that we offer in general across Canada and we'll be able to learn uh, what the recovery profiles are of people with tetraplegia which will allow us to establish dosing and timing of intervention so when's the best time to intervene for people with tetraplegia how much treatment would they benefit from so these are also elements that we will learn as we proceed through this longitudinal study this measure was designed specifically for individuals with traumatic spinal cord injury and we're currently, we've modified it slightly and we're currently implementing it and validating it for the non-traumatic spinal cord injury population, which is a much, much larger group of individuals than the SCI population. And we're hoping that, so most of the groundwork has been done and now with just a few minor changes, we can implement the tool with even a larger part of the population. And one of the benefits we do have from GRASP is um, we've established what's called the psychometric properties, which determine how um, valid or reliable a measure is. So if two people are to perform the test on the same individual, how accurate, how similar are the results? So we've established the reliability, reliability to be quite high. And when your reliability is high with a measure, it means that you need a much smaller sample to have a successful study, the power of your study needs to be, it doesn't need to be as high, which is great because in spinal cord injury it's very difficult to have an increased power because the prevalence and incidence of the, of the disease is so low. So that's one exciting outcome is that we can perform studies and not require so many patients involved in the studies, which is great. It'll move research forward right. faster. Currently, the GRASP is being used quite uh, frequently in Ontario, so we have all of our spinal cord injury centers except for Ottawa currently involved in what's our longitudinal studies, so our Ontario sites are all using the GRASP, and we have Calgary and Alberta also involved in our GRASP study. Um, and the rest of the country is still, you know, in the process of uptake. But yes, it would be appropriate for many people to use it because um, it would be it would be nice for somebody that's being transferred from a hospital to to have 
a piece of paper that says oh, an individual scores the, you know these five scores on the grasp and the receiving therapist will know exactly what that patient presents right. like at the time of their you know their admission to rehab well there's there's two points that I'd like them to remember I think the first one is um, how successful of a collaboration the project has been and I think it's a very a very um, nice opportunity for the spinal cord injury field to actually see um, a successful collaboration that has actually moved the field forward quickly. So within two to three years we were able to come together as a group to uh, establish an outcome measure and validate it um, in, an, in a multinational study and that's because we collaborated. And these types of things often take in the neighborhood of 10 years to do. Um, if you talk to um, individuals who specialize in development of outcome measures, these things take years and years to do. So the first point is, is that it was a very successful collaboration and it's an ongoing collaboration. Um, and I just, and I think that there's a lot of power. You have a great deal of power when you're able to successfully collaborate with people. So that's the first point that I'd like to point out about the grasp. And the second point is that um, essentially, we've uh, we've gone the whole process from starting from scratch, developing a novel outcome measure, and it's now it's now a completed product, and it's available to to anyone that's interested in using it. And we're currently supporting as many of the trials that are ongoing um, with training, training the staff, um, encouraging people to use the measure um, because it's now ready for use. And when Dana and Christopher refunded the project, one of the one of the goals that they had was is that once this tool was developed, um, you would get it out there and it would be available to everybody for widespread use. So we've essentially developed, created, developed, we're now manufacturing the product and it's available for widespread use.